Okay, so here we are now in our code. I'm gonna shrink this code a little bit. So I have the parameters for one rectangle. I have two sounds loaded. I have a conditional statement to for when I'm inside of my square that it will make a fill. And then I have a separate conditional statement here in the mouse press function to handle the sound. Okay, so uh, as I said, eventually I want to make a second train sound so what I, or a second sound happen here and if I have to do that I have to make more variables I have to make more conditional statements so I'm gonna change this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of all of this okay I'll get rid of this else statement for the time being okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm make a different conditional statement okay and it's gonna behave slightly differently but it'll basically do the same thing so now what I'm gonna do is I'm, there is a built-in uh, Boolean variable to the sound file object, okay? The same object that we use that does dot .play and dot .loop that we've seen in other videos. So this is called, the, whatever the name of the variable is that I am using for this sound. So in this case, it's the doorbell object. So I'm gonna do the bell variable. Bell dot lowercase i is capital P playing open close parentheses all right so this is a boolean variable uh, that is stored in here and basically it's saying when uh, this bell dot play happens that this is true if it's not playing okay then it is false so now in here i'm going to write that fill 25500 okay and i will add this else statement as well just to keep things consistent. So fill 255, right? So now when I click, it's gonna trigger the sound and then the sound is gonna trigger this to become true, which will affect that. So this is a slightly cleaner way of having my code. Now the one thing we'll notice, and I'll wait to do it. So you see that it, the fill doesn't go away yet. The fill only goes away once the sound file is done. Okay, so even if there's a little extra silence at the end, that's gonna be the one difference that you need to be aware of. So I click it, I could click it again. Okay, and it's basically gonna stay read until the end of that first sound file. All right, uh, but that is the bell is playing uh, Boolean variable here. So now what this means is I can now add a separate sound file but actually what I'm gonna do first is just show you how I can add some animation to this or change a few other things okay so let's say I'm going to do uh, I'm gonna I want my rectangle to get larger in one direction okay so it's gonna get bigger along the x-axis so here's what I'm gonna do okay uh, I'm gonna do RW and then I'm gonna do uh, plus equals three Okay, so every time through draw while the bell is playing, the width of my rectangle is going to get bigger, okay? But then I want it to go back to normal, so the else, this is basically we just reset everything back to normal in this else statement here. So now I press it, okay, is nothing happening, but now I click, okay? and I see my rectangle start to grow and grow, and then it goes back to normal when it is. Maybe I'll make the canvas uh, much bigger here so we can really see it go. Let's try again. Okay, it's still going. I could then adjust maybe the amount that's growing, so I could do one. Okay, so that's could do kind of like a timeline. I could also, instead of doing the animation, I could just make it equal to a different number. Okay, so I click it and it just automatically gets big. So you can make the decision there. Do you want to do animation in which you need to add to that variable using like plus equals or minus equals? Or if you just want to change it to a separate value, you can do that as well. But that's how we could add some animation. I could do maybe move the rectangle. So plus equals uh, one here. So this time I press play and I need to make sure I change both these Rx and Rx. So this time it's gonna move the rectangle itself is going to move as we go, okay? And I think I'm just, for the sake of right here, I'm gonna change this to a train. So train is playing, bell is playing, so I can switch them up here, and then I kinda like 
that better for a, a train. I could change this number to maybe make the train go faster. Okay, so there you have how we can use the is playing method along with our sound objects to then trigger animation and make our code a little cleaner. Okay, I'll do one last video after this just to show how we can now have two things happening. Okay, so how I would have two different shapes uh, being triggered depending on the sound and how each sound will change only depending which sound is playing.